Hello guys, welcome to IGCC Physics. Today we'll be looking at forces and motion and in particular we'll be finding the difference between vectors and scalars and what the resultant force is. So let's get started. So what is a force? Well, a force can change the shape of an object, its motion or state of rest. The unit for force is Newtons. Remember this is a capital N since it's after the uh, famous scientist Sir Isaac Newton. Uh, a small n is not allowed in this specification and uh, you will be deducted marks for it guys. And uh, the conversion is as follows. 10 newtons is equals to 1 kilogram. This is useful to know uh, in an exam question if you need, uh, if you need this help. Um, and also when two objects interact they exert equal and opposite forces. This is quite important guys. What this means is you can see in this image uh, that this boxer is for punching uh, his opponent with the force of 150 newtons. Not only his opponent for face a force of 150 newtons, the boxer himself will face a um, force of minus 150 newtons back as well since he's generating the force through his muscles. And that's what this means when two objects, in this case two people, uh, interact, they exert equal, that's the that's keyword here, and opposite forces, the another keyword you have to remember this guys, it's very important. We'll move on to the next slide now. So what is a vector quantity? Well, a vector quantity is a quantity that has magnitude and an associated direction. This is what that separates them from scalar quantities, which I'll show you in the next slide. Examples of vector quantities include displacement, velocity and acceleration. The difference the biggest uh, the difference is that displacement is vector while distance is scalar. Uh, velocity is speed in a given direction. Acceleration is the rate at which speed changes at a certain period of time. Positive values means towards the right and negative means towards the left. This is quite important uh, because uh, in, in, in questions uh, that it uses momentum or even uh, velocity itself, they may be asking which two vehicles are travelling at the same velocity, they may give you the same speed uh, but the velocity would be different because they might be travelling in the opposite direction and here's an, here's an image to explain this sen last sentence you can clearly notice that the speed of these two vehicles are the same however the velocity is different because one is travelling to the left and one is travelling to the right the reason is if you take the uh, axes, if you take the x-axis, um, positive values, you put them towards the right and hence the reason why positive velocity is towards the right and negative values in an x-axis are towards the left hence the reason why negative velocity is towards the left. Okay, let's go to a scalar quantity. So what is a scalar quantity? Uh, it's a quantity that has magnitude only and no associated direction. That's the key difference. Both these quantities have magnitude but Scalar doesn't have an associated direction and uh, examples here include speed, distance and time. That's the key difference in this one guys. You have to remember, this is very key, an object with constant speed doesn't mean it has constant velocity. I've already explained this, in the, uh, uh, I've already explained this earlier and uh, this is just another uh, reminder that is very key that you don't confuse yourself with speed and velocity. You know, an object, uh, an example of this is circular motion, which I will explain in a later video. Um, but in a, in circular motion, for instance, the object m around this circle might be traveling at a constant speed. However, its velocity is changing constantly, and uh, ha and for this, you can't say that it has constant velocity because the direction is changing, and that's the reason why this sentence is very important, guys. So we'll move on to the next slide. So what is a resultant force? A resultant force is a single force that has the same effect as all the forces combined. The keywords here are single force, same effect and all the forces combined. For instance, take this object, take this object. You can see if this object was pushed with a force of 100 newtons but the force of friction was minus 100 newtons on the object, then the object could either be um, stationary or moving at constant velocity 
you have to use the term constant velocity here rather than constant speed. Okay. So what we say is the conclusion of this is the object isn't accelerating since there is no resultant force. It is traveling in constant velocity. So this object would be traveling, for instance, uh, either zero meters per second or even five meters per second. Who knows what the previous thing was? So th this is very key. Yeah, whenever there is no resultant force, the object will never ever accelerate. Um, however, if there is, the object will accelerate. And this is a summary of resultant forces. So, if the resultant force is not equal to zero, then the object is accelerating because the velocity is changing. If the resultant force is zero, the object is either traveling in constant velocity or is stationary. Um, so, this is the summary I already told you earlier in the previous slide, and this is just some, uh, summing up what you need to know. Uh, this sentence is also quite important, guys. The size of the force is determined by its length. So equal forces have same length, while unequal ones have different one, different lengths. So you have to remember this in an exam paper, for instance, if they ask you to draw. If they have drawn an arrow 5 centimeters towards the left, indicating 10 newtons, they may ask you to draw uh, they might ask you to draw a 10 newtons of force towards the right. You have to remember that you have to draw the again 5 centimeters again. If you do it 6 or 7, they're not going to give you the mark. So let's move to the next slide. Formula for forces. Uh, this formula is quite important, and I'll do a few questions in a later video. But this is how it goes. Force equals m, which is mass, times acceleration. And the units are indicated below. Force measured in newtons, capital N, remember. Mass, kilograms, and acceleration is meters per second squared. I will talk about these formulas in a later video guys so don't get, don't be worried yet and I'll do a few questions as a, an example to help you and uh, this sentence again is important the higher the mass or acceleration of an object the higher the force it has it's quite obvious because you can see the formula is m, f equals m times a if m is high or a is high f will automatically become higher because it's multiplying and that's what it that's what this means guys and thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe if you uh, please subscribe if you enjoyed it, and uh, I hope uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.